Rhode Island just, uh, just tog Mecca. So this is fishing right here. Is this in the round? Get him up! Get him out! I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen this much fish catching on other episodes of, uh, <laughs> at, of At The Rail. Yeah. Hey. I haven't seen this much fish catching at the buzzer. After not catching a single keeper on last year's At The Rail Tog trip, I felt like I had to get back on a party boat headed for the Tog grounds to prove, if only to myself, that I can in fact catch a keeper blackfish on a headboat. On this trip, I'm boarding the Island Current 3 out of Snug Harbor, Rhode Island, with my friend Captain Garrett Weir, founder of the Fish Finders Angling Community, and several other fishing YouTubers filming the trip for their own channels. What up? Let's go! Garrett is obsessed with tog fishing. Every season, he travels from his home in New York to as far away as Maryland and Massachusetts in pursuit of his beloved wrasse. Through Fish Finders, he organizes trips to introduce more anglers to his favorite fish, while adding some camaraderie and competition to the fishing experience. So Fish Finders is a company and the baby that I started. Um, some background on me, I grew up in Brooklyn, uh, went to Canarsie High School, played baseball at a high level, went to college on scholarship. I played baseball at Seton Hall University, went to school on scholarship, and I finished my education at Delaware State University. I have a master's also from Delaware State University. I played pro ball for a couple years up here in Boston, played baseball. So fish, I say that to say, when I got back down from playing pro ball, I didn't have a crew of guys to fish with. My boys didn't fish, so I started Fish Finders. And the idea of Fish Finders initially was more of a, I want to get minorities involved in it. And then it became this, right? Uh, a diaspora, a utopia, different peop people were coming together. That's where the mission statement came from. The mission statement of Fish Finders is bringing like-minded guys to fish together. And it went from trying to be a more of a minority thing to being a community thing. And that hence the name Fish Finder Community of Anglers. On Fish Finders trips, the party boat pool is taken to the extreme. Instead of the optional $5 to $20 on most boats, every angler on a Fish Finders trip Ante's up $50 for a pool that is determined not by the biggest fish, but by the biggest two fish combination. This, Garrett explains, removes beginner's luck from the equation, forcing an angler to catch two nice fish to end up in the money. You can also enter side Calcuttas for up to $250. Given my history with headboat tog fishing, the Calcuttas are too rich for my blood, so I toss in my 50 bucks and hope for the best. The Island Current 3 is loaded down with bait, a mix of green and Atlantic rock crabs, better known among tog fishermen as white leggers. White leggers are the natural forage for tog at many of the deep water structures, making them the more preferred bait than green crabs. The trade-off is that green crabs are less expensive and more readily available. As the Island Current crew anchors over our first stop of the day, I'm left with the question of whether to start with a jig or a rig. Tog jigs are a relatively recent development. These specialized jig heads are baited with crabs and dropped to the bottom, where they sit with the hook upright, making an enticing presentation to the nearby tog. They work best on lighter spinning gear, which makes them a little more fun to fish. But when presenting a larger bait, like a whole white legger, two hook rigs are best, and that's what I start with. Garrett, so why'd you start with a rig instead of a jig? I just want to see what's going on, see what the tide is doing. I mean, some days I'll, I'll start with, I'll go right to the jig, you know what I mean? It's a little windy out here, so I want to see what the tide is like. If it's too, if it's too strong, I'll stay with the rig. If it's, if it's something I can handle the jig and I'll go to the jig. I just want to, you know, 
I did I had a, I had a pool fish yesterday with the with the jig with the rig, so that's kind of fresh in my mind. So you know, one of those things where what's what's working for you, you kind of stick with. For, I'm, I, I'm definitely jig first. So I just wanted to see what's going on first, then go to, then go to the jig. Get it early too, so yeah, it's called a training wheel they call it. Just to get some life built up. So you have the Drigler jig, and then you have the second one. Just floating. I like to keep it nice and low like that. Yeah, two. Two different two different uh, offerings. There's gonna be some big fish caught today, Trevor. Oof. You see that you feel, you feel that, that air too, John? You know you know it too. Huh? That Rhode Island air, it's that big fish air right now. Rhode Island just it's just tog mecca. I mean, people say the mecca, they call it Maryland. I, I say it's here. I say it's here because it's just so much landscape. You don't gotta you don't have to have wrecks and have to have bottom. The only thing you gotta do is just go turn your, your electronics on and find bottom and build a bike. Because you don't have to go and follow the fleet. You know, I, and Trevor and I, you know, he has a boat as well. We can use our electronic. You find a piece of bottom, yeah. and you, if you build it, fishing Rhode Island, there's so many fish. They'll, you know, you can have them literally coming to you. You almost, you can almost chum them up. There he is. Awesome. The bite starts slow in the stern with a few shorts and sea bass, but in the bow. But a big fish alert. Rich's fish kicks off a flurry of good fishing in the front half of the boat, with several more keepers and a couple more big ones being taken. Swing it, I want to break off or something. <laughs> the bite at our first stop slows, and Captain Scott moves us from an oceanside reef to a bayside wreck. All right, here we go. Oh. At the wreck, the current is stronger and the bottom is riddled with snags. Almost immediately, fishermen on the port side of the boat begin hooking keeper tog. But the unforgiving structure claims many rigs and jigs and fish. This is a wreck. This is a wreck. So we're fishing off the wreck. So those fish are coming off the wreck and you gotta get them before they go into the wreck. Well, Heavy current fish and you fish off the wreck. Fishing on credit. 
There's a terrible hook set and I have to watch it all over again. Dealing with small bait stealers is an unavoidable fact of tog fishing. At the wreck, swarms of small sea bass, scuff, and undersized blackfish make short work of every fresh crab dropped to the bottom. While frustrating, you have to keep the faith. Eventually, a bigger tog will muscle its way through the smaller nuisances and find your bait. So the bar is at 11.3. 12 pounder would give me a comfortable cushion. <laughs> You're right. Oh, they're on it right away as soon as it hits bottom. But they do not feel like fish that I could set a hook into. The big fish is going to come. Yeah, man, everybody around has been uh, getting more bites on the jigs than, than the, the rig, so. Switch over to, this is the Tsunami Tog Treat. Just change the presentation up. Winningness is not gonna be, you know, getting big fish, big fish. You're gonna get a, have, get a pick some keepers out of, out of place like, oh! I smoked on the way down. Damn. There might be a school of sea bass though that's, that's, that's smoking on the way down too. You gotta, you gotta pick some keepers and then when we get on a nice piece, then get one donkey off of it. And that's how it's gonna be one. Listen, this is fishing right here. It's about a game plan, putting a game plan together. If Anthony was here right now, Garrett, he'd be saying every, every knock, knock at, at the, the door, door gets, gets answered. answered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's his togging line. I let a lot of, knock, I let a lot of knocks go unanswered. <laughs> Whoop. There you go, that's a good one. Sound good? Uh, no, nah, yeah, I don't think so. All right, good. Yeah, I'll keep mine. Right? Nice. Beautiful, that's a nice one. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Between the snags, I hook a keeper, and while it's no threat to Richie's first drop 11 pounder, I tag it for the pool anyway, just happy to be in the game. The shared suffering of a group of tog fishermen braving the cold, missed fish, and lost rigs is what's created the tog's cult-like following. While my suffering ended with my first keeper going on ice, as Garrett retires from yet another breakoff, He's reminded of just why he loves tog fishing. Man, I love this. Crying or not, I love this. Glutton for punishment, dude. But I love it. <laughs> it is. It really is. More so than fluke? Yeah, absolutely. Way, way more than fluke. I think it separates the men from the boys, you know, especially when it gets cold. You know what I mean? Everybody, a lot of fair weather fishermen, you know, any, anybody can go fluke fish and flip flops and t shirts. In the, in the, uh, the middle of the summer, you know what I mean? Like, you know, to come out in 20, to 20 mile an hour winds with 40 degrees and it feels like it's 20 degrees, you know, your hands are frozen, snot, snot's freaking fr freezing in your face to get that one bite, you know? It's just, it's just pretty awesome. This was a good one, man. There's a lot of action here, just lost, so many lost fish, dude. Like you were saying, if you didn't get them, up and away from it immediately. It's a lot of a lot of nice fish. Yeah. But this is also the type of place where like it pays to be able to get your rig back tied up quick, man. Like absolutely.
Yeah. <laughs> All throughout the trip, even when the fishing is slow, Garrett's vision for fish finders is on full display. Fishermen trade tips, bust chops, and enjoy time on the water with old friends and new ones. Captain Scott, so can you tell me a little bit about the Island Current Fleet? So uh, the Island Current Fleet's been up here in Rhode Island at Snug Harbor Marina for about uh, 12 years now. Yeah, we filmed our 100th episode cod fishing with you guys. Um, Correct. Yeah, that'd be 10 years ago it now. Was. Yep, it was great. Yeah. I remember I was on that trip, actually. That was a good one. So you guys, you used to just come up for the cod, now we, you come up for the We did, cod. so that we rolled that into a little bit earlier this season. Um, we still, because we have so many other boats, that we're still operating in New York. So we just bring one of the boats you know, up here to snow. And, and that's this one, the Island Current 3? Correct, this is the Island Current 3. This is uh, this is our flagship. We have a bigger boat that we just bought last fall, but this is a better bottom fishing boat with the two anchors and the way it's set up. It's, uh, it seems to be a kind of a crowd pleaser for the, for the black fishing. So what are some of the stats on this boat? How big is it and how many people can it handle? So we have a uh, 64 foot DMR. The boat was built up in Maine. I believe it was built in 2004. She's got Caterpillar 3406, which is about 900, 1800 total horsepower. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty comfortable. It's a heavy boat, about 80 tons. That's why it sits so nice in the water. I'd imagine a little bit more compact. It's probably easier to get more guys over the fish, especially it, it, talking. Correct. Like this. Yeah, it's it's you know it's wide, it's stable. It's just all the things that you need for you know good platform for, for the bottom fishing. And so, how long have you been uh, with Island Current Fleet? I've been I've been here for 12 years. I started with them when we brought the boat up the first year. Okay. So it's been this is uh, the 12th year for myself as well. And the top, when do you start the tog fishing in the typical season? When do you end it? Open, opening day is October 15th. Uh, so we bring the boat up for that, you know, beginning of the of the season. We typically go to about the second week in December. At that point, there's such a demand for the codfish typically that we just kind of end it early and roll right into the cod fishing season. We're still on a on decent bottom because typically at that point we're fishing more by Block Island. Okay. And in the Block Island, you still still you'll still see some blackfish, codfish, and more of a mixed bag toward that second week of December. If you were going to pick a peak time? In the past, it's been good right off the bat. It stays strong all the way to the very end of November. Uh, as long as you have the right weather, uh, north winds, um, all that stuff all helps to make the fish chew and growl and, and, and happy for everyone. Uh, it's the things that, you know, like the south winds up here aren't very favorable for the bottom fishing, but Typically, it runs very strong until that first week in December, and then it starts getting a little spotty. Tips for somebody coming on your boat trying to get help to give them an edge over the other guys, an edge over the tog. What, uh, what would you recommend to somebody oh, man. like myself? <laughs> <laughs> you did fine today. Who you did? <laughs> so, party boat fishing is tough. Obviously, uh, you always want to have your own personal rod because you feel most comfortable with that, opposed to a boat rod. A lot of these people are jig fishing now. That wasn't so big a couple of years ago. 
it's definitely turning into quite a thing now. I, I, even today, I saw a lot of people using the jigs, and they did they did great. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely a lighter feel, more action for, for a lot of angles, a lot more fun. Black fishing is a tricky tricky game. Yeah. You have you have to be fine tuned. There's no drinking the night before. You have you have to really <laughs> come be, sharp. That's it. You have to come sharp. You have to pay attention. I myself personally, when I fish, I only use one hook. I, I find like the two hook rig will get stuck in the bottom more often. It's just it, everybody has a preference. You just have to find what works for you. On the last stop of the day, the bite starts slowly but builds to a fever pitch with everyone catching. This is pretty nice. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oop. Keepers are coming over the rail all around the boat, right up until the moment that Captain Scott sounds the horn three times, signaling the end of the fishing. Is this in the raffle? Oh, get him up! <laughs> Turn that in, Orlando! I don't know. I haven't seen this much fish catching on other episodes of uh, At the Walk? Yeah. About the Rail. Yo, hey, I haven't right. seen this much fish catching. You were saving that all day, right? I wasn't. That's how you were doing? That was nice. At the buzzer. <laughs> that was perfect, man. Dude, this is awesome, man. On the ride in, Garrett raffles off a wide range of fishing prizes, another perk of a fish finder's trip. Richie's first fish held on long enough to let him sweep the pool and the Calcuttas, netting him a substantial chunk of change. While my keepers had no real shot at the pool money, I felt rich in spirit as the mates cut the fish and I considered how delicious my tog fillets would be, dusted with seasoned cornmeal, sauteed in butter, and served with a side of redemption. <laughs>